the city shall be taken. Now this is now again during the final seven years during the, the peace agreement from that the Antichrist confirms uh, seven years prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ, Daniel's seventieth week. That's Zechariah's two up there. Will, one of the five characteristics in that peace agreement is that Israel will retain control of Jerusalem all the way throughout the end time. But when the, at the Battle of Armageddon, the Bible says, "I'll gather all nations to battle against Jerusalem." The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. So Israel will control it all the way through, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And then what's going to happen? The Lord's had it up to here with the whole mess. He's done. The Bible says, Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fought in the day of battle. And in that day, his feet will stand on what? The Mount of Mount Olives. Olives. Where we just came from. So, get this. The Mount of Olives is so pathetically significant, Jesus Christ ascended from there, and he's coming back there. And that's where he's going to plant his feet on the Mount of Olives. The Bible says, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the valley, half of the valley short, blah, blah. half of the mountain shall move towards the north, half towards the south. And then you shall flee through the, the mountains and valleys, uh, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azel. And yes, you shall flee as you fled uh, the, um, from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah the king. So it goes on to talk uh, about that. But the fact of the matter is, is that there's going to be a great earthquake. It's highly likely that the temple, the third temple, will go straight to hell, possibly. Uh -huh. It's all just going to be split wide open. There will be 7,000 people killed in that earthquake. A lot of things are going to happen during that time, but Zechariah prophesied about this, and Zechariah, the prophet Joel, let me read you something, Joel, again, I wanted to, I wanted to read you. The prophet Joel, uh, Revelation 16, so many prophecies. When the Bible talks about the day of the Lord, the day of God's wrath, all of that is the battle of Armageddon. It, it, the, the great tribulation is not the God's wrath. That's right. Say that one more time. The Great Tribulation is not, not God's, God's wrath. wrath. Many people believe a lot of different things because they believe the Tribulation is God's wrath. It's not. God's wrath is the seven vials of the wrath of God that will be poured out in Revelation 16 at the time of the Battle of Armageddon. The, the Great Tribulation is the wrath of Satan. And that would be maybe a question somebody could ask. The night we do go to our college, we're going to have a Q&A session. And we'll get questions from you guys. That would be a question. How do you know the Great Tribulation is the wrath of Satan? Okay because a lot of people do not know that. Most of the prophecy teachers on television, most of them that I know, teach that the Great Tribulation is the wrath of Satan, but they got it way off. There was a guy that wrote a book named Clarence Larkin, Dispensational yep. Truth, oh, yeah. back in the early 1900s. And now if you guys are subscribers to Clarence Larkin, I'm, I'm gonna mess with your stuff here. <laughs> because he, he was 